Hello again and good morning, friends, children, families, everyone. I'm out here in a work shed, and as you can see, there are lots of tools everywhere, like this screwdriver or this wrench. Today, we're celebrating Juneteenth. I'm out here because while it is true Juneteenth is a celebration of freedom and the emancipation of slaves, we're also acknowledging the fact that there is still a lot of work to do for everyone to really be free. Now, I want to introduce you to my grandfather. This is a picture somebody drew of him. His name is Donald Perkins. He was a football player and he played for the Dallas Cowboys. He was born free, which meant that he was allowed to work hard and make something of his life to grow and learn and get better. Now, his grandparents, my great-great-grandparents, were not. They had to work, and they didn't get to enjoy any of the benefits. Today, I'm grateful that my grandfather was able to make something of himself, and I am proud of him. But I also know not everyone has those same opportunities. There's still a lot of suffering in our world, and not everyone is able to be free. Today, I would like us all to think together about the work that we can do and the work that still has to be done for people everywhere to enjoy this freedom. God bless you, friends. I am really glad to be worshiping with you today. Amen. For our song this week, uh, I, I was thinking about this song, Lift Every Voice and Sing. And this song is often referred to as the Black National Anthem in the US, because it's such an important song as part of the history of African-American culture. And um, I thought that I would, uh, instead of me singing it, I thought it would be cool to see it being performed by other people in different ways. And so first I, I have, there's a link to a, a video and the video is called Why uh, Lift Every Voice, Why We Lift Every Voice and Sing, the name of the video. So it's a story behind the Black National Anthem. And so that's some of the history of the song. And you can learn a little bit more about the song and get some context about it. And then the three uh, videos that I included, there's one is the Morehouse Glee Club. And this is a huge group of men singing the song. So Morehouse Glee Club and Morehouse is a historically black college. And they sing, have one rendition of the song. And then Ray Charles, the famous singer, Ray Charles, uh, has another version of the song. And then Aretha Franklin, often considered one of the greatest singers of all time. Uh, Aretha Franklin has another version of the song. And you can see in these videos, they're kind of like different quality. And as you watch the videos, think about what's different in the videos. Um, how did the different ways they sing the song make you feel? What did they make you think? And think about what that means about for the meaning of the song. Like how does the sound and the texture and the rhythm add to the feeling and the message of the song? So that's what we're a little segment on music today. Um, and I, I hope you enjoy listening to all of these songs. Or this song sung three different ways. All right. Thanks a lot for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Let us pray. Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for making us free in you. Thank you for our bodies. Thank you for our breath. Thank you for our mind and our imaginations. And thank you for our hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Keep us safe in our work. And keep us excited about our futures, because you fill us with hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Ah. Uh...
Amen. Welcome back to Allison Scripture Corner. Today we're celebrating a holiday a little bit early that you might not know about. Or maybe you do now because it's been getting a lot of media attention of late. Um, see, a lot of white Americans in general don't know about Juneteenth, but it's a really popular event in black communities, especially those in the South. This holiday, Juneteenth, which is a portmanteau or a smushing up of words of June and 19th, is celebrated on, you guessed it, June 19th, this coming Friday. And what does it celebrate? Well, in short, it's Freedom Day or Cell Liberation Day or Jubilee Day. It commemorates the liberation of enslaved black people in the United States on June 19th, 1865. Now, you may be saying, hey, didn't Abraham Lincoln issue the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863? Yes, he did. And that was over two and a half years before Juneteenth. But sometimes, as we know, news, especially news that some people do not want to share, takes a long time to travel. So on Juneteenth, two months and ten days after Robert E. Lee surrendered to the Union and the Civil War ended, the Emancipation Proclamation was read to the enslaved African Americans in Galveston, Texas. See, Texas was the most remote of the slave states, and because there wasn't much fighting there at all, there wasn't much in the way of enforcing the Emancipation Proclamation until after the war had ended. And while a lot of people think that Juneteenth freed the last remaining slaves, it actually wasn't until December 18th, 1865, when the 13th Amendment was ratified, that all African American slaves were freed because the Emancipation Proclamation didn't apply to border states, which were those slave states that neither joined the Confederacy nor seceded from the Union. So why do we celebrate Juneteenth? Uh, some of it honestly just has to do with the parties people threw right then and there. And then they became a tradition, and like most traditions, it tells us a lot about who we were, who we are, and who we might become, especially as a country. So while Juneteenth is a happy day of celebration, it's also a reminder that there's always work to be done. Just like it took two and a half years for the news to even reach Texas, it took nearly another hundred years for African American and black people and people of color to achieve equal rights under the law. And yet another 50, 60 some odd years later, today, black people and people of color are still discriminated against, harassed, and as we keep seeing, killed just for the color of their skin. But, once again, we're getting to work. In just three short weeks, drastic changes have been taking place all over our country, right here in our city and our state with the uh, repealing um, Article 50A, which gave police protection in cases of uh, anything, really. But it's repealing it means that there's more transparency in the police force and that people can be held accountable. And that's just the, that's just the first step. You've seen probably on the news that there have been a lot of movements to uh, defund police forces, which doesn't mean no police. It just means reallocating money to social services and schools and really important things. Um, and because we have gotten to work hitting the streets and refusing once again to be silent, these things might actually come to pass. But gotta keep working. Today, I heard the news that this Juneteenth, our president is planning a campaign rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that's a really big deal because of Tulsa's history. One of the ugliest parts of American history, one that a lot of people don't learn about in school, I know I didn't until college, uh, and my friend who grew up in Tulsa, never learned about it in school either, um, is the Tulsa Race Massacre. In 1921, over Memorial Day weekend, a young man named Dick Rowland was accused, falsely, it later turned out, it's funny how that happens, um, of assaulting a young white woman, and he was arrested. An angry white mob gathered outside of the courthouse, and when rumors that he had been lynched reached the black community there, um, a group went out to confront the mob. Shots were fired and 10 white people ended up dead, which infuriated the white population of the city. They rioted, uh, rampaged through the black neighborhood, which was also known as Black Wall Street, 
for its wealth and successful businesses, killing 26 people, burning buildings, looting stores and homes, and leaving 10,000 people homeless and about $2 million in property damage and real estate losses. Their property was never recovered, and they were never compensated for the damage. So, I didn't mean to bum you out too much there. Rather, I'm angry, and I want you to be angry too. Our president is essentially planning to dance on the graves of innocent people who were murdered and gather an angry mob in the same place where black folks were driven out of their homes quite simply because they were well-to-do and therefore a threat. This is a deliberate smack in the face of all of the work that Mo Movement for Black Lives, Black Lives Matter, and people everywhere, people just like you and me, have been doing for racial justice. We must remember that Juneteenth is just as much about celebration as it is about fighting back. But can say that this year, it's definitely going to be one to remember. So before I go, I'm going to leave you with a little prayer in which I quote Harriet Tubman. Always remember... You have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Go change the world. We've got this. Amen. This week for Children's Ministry, we're talking about Juneteenth, the celebration of the liberation of enslaved people in the United States. And Juneteenth is a really important part of U.S. history, part of African American history, um, and you know, sadly, it's not something that we um, in this country always learn about. And I'll say, I never learned about Juneteenth in school. And as a non-black person, I think it's really important for uh, me to know about it, and for everyone to really to know about the history and important moments in this country. And so I found. Um, a really good video about Juneteenth that I'll link here in this video and uh, I think you can go watch that if you want if you want to go watch it now uh, you can and I'm gonna do a little true or false questions I wrote out my questions here and we're just gonna do kind of a trivia game about the history of Juneteenth so go ahead and watch that now if you want or we can just talk about it uh, you can just watch this video all right so the first question, number one, uh, true or false, every enslaved person in the U.S. was instantly free when Abe Lincoln made the Emancipation Proclamation official on January 1st, 1863. Is that true or false? That is false. Really, uh, what this holiday, Juneteenth, commemorates is that, you know, for two and a half years, um, people all over the South, you know, while the Civil War was still raging on, you know, many people didn't know that there was that, what the Emancipa Emancipation Proclamation was that freed the slaves, um, or it wasn't being enforced because the Confederate soldiers in the South and the slave, overs, slave owners did not want to cooperate with this law. And so it took a long time for the Union forces, for the Union Army, to get down uh, to Texas specifically and have this command, this proclamation, and officially, um, after uh, the South, the Confederate Army had surrendered, finally proclaim the freedom of the enslaved people who were in Texas. And so it took, it took a long time. And that's not something that we always learn about in school, but it's very important. All right, number two. Juneteenth often focuses on education and self-improvement and involves prayer services. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I just wanted to add that in. I thought it was an interesting thing I read about. Um, we're trying to kind of educate ourselves and each other about this holiday, so I thought I would add that. Um, Self-improvement, you know, learning from history, and prayer services. I mean, many people are prayerful, and it's a good time to pray for freedom and liberation um, and the history of this country, to be grateful and also to recognize you know, where we are now and how much more we have to do. Okay, number three, uh, true or false. Raspberry soda is associated with Juneteenth. Is that true or false? That is false. Actually, strawberry soda pop is associated with Juneteenth. 
Um, I've never had strawberry soda. It sounds actually really good. I've had orange soda and other types of soda, but I've never had strawberry soda, so maybe I'll try it sometime. Um, but yeah, Juneteenth is often celebrated with barbecues and other celebrations with a lot of special foods. Um, and, you know, strawberry soda is part of that. But lots of other foods that people eat to celebrate this holiday. So number four, uh, true or false. Clothing um, is an important part of Juneteenth history because enslaved people were often limited in their clothes. Is that true or false? That clothing is an important part of the holiday. It's true. So if you, you know, in the history when, when there were slaves in the United States, oftentimes these slaves were prevented from wearing clothes that they wanted to wear. They were given rags and cheap clothes. And so when uh, they became free, they, you know, threw out the, the rags that they had worn and they like embraced wearing the clothes that they wanted to wear, not the clothes that they were forced to wear. That's an important part of the history. All right, number five. In the early days of Juneteenth, African-American communities were sometimes banned from using public property for festivities. Is that true or false? That is sadly true. And so, of course, as we know, um, the fight for racial justice, the fight against white supremacy and against racism has lasted a long time and still continues today. And so even when after you know, slaves were officially free, the law was on the books, um, many black communities and you know, families and people weren't able to celebrate this holiday in public. Um, they had to find other spaces because um, the government or police or people wouldn't let them celebrate this day of freedom, which is you know, a shame. Okay, number six, true or false. On January 1st, 1920, Juneteenth became an official state holiday in Texas. Is that true or false? That is false. Actually, it became an official state holiday in Texas on January 1st, 1980. So a lot later uh, than 1920, but now it's an official holiday. And that is important because a lot of people get to learn about the history. Okay, number seven, true or false. Today, Juneteenth is enjoying a phenomenal growth rate. Is that true or false? That is true. You know, lots of people celebrate Juneteenth. You can see all of our cities across the US on their Juneteenth celebration. Sadly, of course, this year, um, we're all inside in June. And so people don't get to celebrate the same way that they have in past years. But nevertheless, lots of um, institutions like museums and of course churches uh, children and youth ministry uh, YouTube accounts uh, celebrate and acknowledge Juneteenth. And so lots of people get the opportunity to learn about the holiday and about its history. All right, so there we go. There was our true or false. Uh, let me know how many you got right. Um, and yeah, I hope, you, I hope you learned something and I hope you learned from uh, some of these videos, this video that I shared and any other information you can find, you know. Uh, do some, some research and learn more about the holiday and, and the history. So for our repeat after me prayer today, I decided to come out uh, to my patio and sit in the sun. It's kind of a patio, kind of an alley, um, but either way, it's beautiful. And I enjoy being out here. And, um, you know, as we, when we pray, oftentimes, Prayer or meditation helps us get in touch with the world around us, and especially nature. And so being outside, because we, you know, having been inside in quarantine for so long, it's time moves strangely. And so being outside helps me remember that it's summer, it's June, helps me see where I am I'm in the bigger picture of things. And so it's nice to just feel the sun, feel the heat, um, feel the sweat on my face. But anyway, so this is a repeat after me. Prayer. Dear God, be with us this week as we learn about and celebrate Juneteenth. Be with us as we remember the history of 
racism and slavery and liberation that shapes our country. Be with us as we learn more about this history, more about how racism is still shaping our present. God be with all the people fighting against racism, fighting in the movement, in the movement for Black Lives. And again we say, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter and are precious and are valuable and are important. Be with us at the end of a school year, at the beginning of the summer. Bring us warmth, bring us light, bring us love. Amen. Thank you. Take care, everyone.